I feel that's what holds so many of us creatives back is that we're afraid to have someone not approve of what we're doing. We see it as failure in that we don't deserve a slot within the creative community. What's going on? You're listening to episode 28 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is all about encouraging you to pursue your creativity. I know it's not always easy, but I want this to be a weekly push for you to scratch your creative itch. Because honestly, you never know who you can impact when you start sharing your work. I just want to take the moment to thank you for taking the time to listen, leave a review, share on social media, any of it. It means so much to me as I get a little bit more comfortable about putting myself out there, being vulnerable, and kind of pouring my soul into this podcast outside of my art. And just recently, I made the decision to create a Patreon page. It was really weird for me to ask for people's support and for backers. I'm still working on the page. It's going to be over at Perspective Podcast. But the reason why I am starting a Patreon page is because balancing a day job, trying to pay student loans, trying to squeeze in some freelance, uh, it's really hard to also make time to do the podcast, keep up with the monthly expenses that come with running this podcast from hosting, keeping up with equipment and trying to produce the best consumable content for you. And there's been people who have asked for ways to support me, but they don't want to purchase a drawing. They don't want to purchase a weekly content checklist. So this is an avenue for someone else to support me. So if you want to support the show, it's over at Patreon, Perspective Podcast, and I'll be putting up rewards and all kinds of things for backers as I continue to build this and give extra value to those who want to support me through there. This week's episode stems from a lot of questions I get through my newsletter or just random questions on Instagram or Twitter, random emails, but a lot of people ask me how I got my name, Perspective Collective, and you know what should they do to make sure their name stands out or you know people like their name, random, random questions, but I'm getting it enough that I felt like it should be a topic of this episode. And it's a funny story how I became Perspective Collective and I think it's a valuable story along the way because you have the power to make your name mean something. So if you have a name floating around your head or you're trying to come up with that perfect name for your brand or your creative branch to pursue your work, your business, then this episode's for you. You can find this episode written as a blog or in show note fashion over at perspective-collective.com forward slash 28. Have you ever heard of Gary Vaynerchuk, AKA Gary V? Chances are you probably have if you've been paying attention to the social media entrepreneur scene. I feel like he is a dude you either love or you absolutely hate him due to his bravado or profanity that he uses. One thing's for certain, people know of him because he made his name mean something. As an immigrant from the Soviet Union, Gary helped his dad transform his notable wine library business to a powerhouse through YouTube vlogging. From there, he's gone on to build a multi-million dollar social media business called VaynerMedia. Vaynerchuk or Gary V didn't mean anything to anyone if he didn't bust his ass and pour his soul into what he was passionate about. Picking a name for your brand or business can be hard and it can be really frustrating. Believe me, I can totally relate and I'll share that in a little bit. I'm just here to convince you that you can make whatever name you choose to operate under mean something over time. You have what it takes. So in the beginning, maybe you want to start your own creative brand. Maybe you want to put your art under some kind of name, some kind of moniker. You want to start a business. So you find that there's a need for this name. Well, for me, it was early March of 2014 when I thought my co-partner at the time, DMAC, Dustin McLaughlin, and I were going to take our clothing brand, Daydream and Clothing, to the next level. In earlier episodes, I mentioned how I used to run this clothing brand, and it's taught me a lot, and it's got me to where I am now. At that time, we had been steadily building for four years, and we had a warehouse lined up to make our prototypes, we had an investor willing to give us a shot, and we had a shit ton of ideas and passion to make it happen. 
However, I was creating so much work on the side and not all of it fit the style of the brand. So I needed a way to start sharing this work separately. During this time, I was getting really heavy into hand lettering. It started booming during this time on Instagram. And I thought maybe I could become a big time freelancer on the side of daydreaming. And then I would just need a business name to house all of this work. First thing I went to was the typical Scotty Russell, the design, Russell Studio, Russell Graphics, Russell Design Co. But honestly, they all sounded super douchey. I despised having my name a part of it as it didn't have a nice ring to it. Something about it just didn't click. Even though all my colleagues I knew at the time had their names a part of their brand and it actually sounded cool and they had great logos to go with it. But for me, it just it just wasn't right. I decided to explore a more abstract route instead. And this led me to some massive brain dumps. I know that sounds funny, but I love using that phrase. But I began a massive brain dump of throwing words I liked on paper. Anything that came to mind, I put it down and I started to make connections between the words. And the words that continually kept popping up that I liked the most was collective, collection, and perspective. It took me a little bit, but first I became sold on the word perspective for two different reasons. First off is drawing and seeing perspective in my art or out in just, you know, nature out in the real world always came naturally to me. Or if I needed to do something within Photoshop and superimpose a logo onto some kind of product, I could easily just envision where the perspective would be. The second reason why I chose perspective is because Earlier that year, I had attended my first festival, which was Electric Forest. And that was an amazing, life-changing experience because I was so narrow-minded before that. And my perspective on life dramatically shifted from there. Then the word collective and collection sounded cool as it could mean all my drawings fell into this collection. Otherwise, down the road, it could also mean that maybe I have a team under me. Uh, It would be plural, me as a boss, I guess overseeing a team of other creatives. After a month of throwing ideas around, Perspective Collective was born in April 2014. However, it wasn't until a month later in May when I finally gathered up the courage to announce it publicly with the branding I had created. Had a logo, had a nice little branding, had tertiary marks, all kinds of stuff. You know, I was taking it serious, but I was terrified to share this. And one thing you need to know is that there will always be doubt. When you're just starting off especially, it's easy to feel stupid and doubt yourself and doubt the name that you're going to be putting yourself under. If you're like me, more specifically the old me, you want everyone to love your work and you'd be crushed if someone thought it was stupid. I feel that's what holds so many of us creatives back is that we're afraid to have someone not approve of what we're doing. We see it as failure in that we don't deserve a slot within the creative community. Eventually, I hesitantly began sharing work through this moniker on Facebook and Instagram. This was about the same time that my partner and I had some issues coming to agreements with shares with the investor and the future vision of Daydream and Clothing. Reluctantly, I stepped away from the brand and I began putting all my spare time into Perspective Collective. In the early days, I heard crickets when I posted my work. Seriously, nothing. No likes. No comments, no new followers, no features. It sucked, but man, I was having a blast pursuing my work with no limitations like Daydreaming had limitations on me. You know, I had to fit it within a specific style of the brand. Yet over time, things begin to pick up. And that's when you're able to make your name mean something. After posting consistently and studying how to utilize the former platform of Instagram at that time, you know, things are different, things evolve. I started catching some features on the likes of Good Type, Caligar Type, and the Daily Type. Next thing you know, there's the validation I needed to let me know that, hey, this is possible to pursue my work, especially under this name of Perspective Collective when it really didn't mean anything at the time. And after getting this validation, the likes, the followers, the obsession took over from there. I started noticing that my increased quality of work and consistent dedication to the creative process is what was making my name actually mean something. My point in sharing this story is that you can make whatever name you choose to operate under mean something through enthusiasm and dedication to your craft. 
and you never know what this could evolve into. When you pick a name, you stick with it, you pour your heart and soul into your work, your dedication, your craft, that's when your name can become something so much more. And looking back on it now, it absolutely blows my mind what happened in the course of three years. Back when I started this in March 2014 or April 2014. Hell, a lot can happen even in one year when you decide that you're going to commit to something no matter what other people may think. I vividly remember my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, and my parents questioning my pursuits of self-employment as an artist. You know, why couldn't I just work a safe job like everyone else and relax in the evenings? In my head at the time, I knew that I'm not like everyone else. One night, I remember bawling to my wife the night that I decided to step away from daydreaming. I felt like a quitter, but I remember telling her that I have this feeling that I'm meant to do something special with my life and with my art. I don't know what it is, but I feel it. Three years later, and both her and my parents see what I saw in myself at that moment. I feel it even more today as Perspective Collective has evolved into something more than just a name to house drawings. Perspective Collective is the main side project right now that houses all my other side projects geared towards encouraging creatives like you. These channels of the brand are my personal artwork, of course, my freelance, public speaking, teaching workshops, and the Perspective Podcast. Once I thought the collective portion could mean future employees and I could scale it to be something huge, now I realize the collective is really my best friend and I together. Recently, it dawned on me that I would be nowhere without my wife's support, ideas, and constructive criticism. She is what makes this a collective now as we slowly carve a role for her to do what she does best, which is pretty much everything that I suck at. Having her officially part of the team fuels my ambition to push this project even further. So this is where I want to deliver a challenge to you to make a name for yourself. If you're like me, it's going to feel super awkward putting yourself out there when you decide your name. You're going to overthink it. You're going to feel dumb, especially if you don't get the immediate response that you want. Shit, leading up to this past year, my dad was still calling it collective perspectives. People are going to butcher it. They're not going to understand where you're coming from, and you got to realize that that's okay. As long as it means something to you, and it allows you to pour your soul into your work, that's all that matters. Gary Vee didn't mean shit until he made it mean something. Perspective Collective didn't mean shit until I made it mean something. Now, it's a part of me, and I love it. Aside from the fact that the length of Perspective Collective makes it very non-user friendly across all social media. That's why I have to shorten it all and make it consistent all across all platforms. And it's PRSPCTV underscore CLLCTV. As you can tell, I've practiced it because it's not easy. Regardless, you have the power to make a name for yourself, no matter the name you choose. Don't let doubt and fear rob you of that opportunity. I hope you can find some kind of value or some kind of encouragement to know that stick with it. You can make your name mean whatever the hell you want it to be. There's no limitations of what your name can be. Whether you choose your actual name like Scotty Russell or you choose some abstract way of perspective collective, you have the power to make it mean whatever you want. And I don't want that to hold you back worrying in what other people are thinking. I hope it encourages you to just keep pushing it because you never know what your name can evolve into or how many people it can impact. If you're getting value from the episode, as I mentioned earlier, the best way to give back to the show is now through Patreon over at Perspective Podcast. I'm going to start hooking people up with rewards for backers there or leave a review on iTunes that really helps the show get discovered or share the show via social media. If you decide to draw something that you are inspired by an episode, I'm already over there at Perspective Podcast on Instagram and I am sharing your work and I am tagging you to give you credit. It means the world to me when I see you get inspired and create something off of this episode. That's what I'm talking about, scratching that creative itch. 
I want to give a huge thank you to Nick Jenkins for hooking me up with all this dope theme music for the podcast. You can check him out over at soundcloud.com forward slash Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as always, I want to thank you so much for lending me your ears, lending me the time out of your existence. I want to just encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. 